What's going on guys? I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. If you're a returning subscriber, as always, guys, welcome back and I do appreciate the support. Guys, as you can see, I'm not in my studio. I made I went live earlier today because I forgot my computer and my lab mic and me trying to hurry up and get out of uh, town. So I do humbly apologize to you guys for that. But I promise you the videos will keep coming, and they will. I don't know if I can get these thumbnails set up, but I mean, I'm still going to deliver the news. And I seen something that was shocking to me, and it's also something that's like, you know, upsetting. It seems like a lot of cities out here that are majority uh, black and, you know, minority, a lot of times are crap. And I'm for real, I'm going to tell you a story today, right? And this is out of a city that showed me crazy love, but the truth got to be told. Memphis, Tennessee. Shout out Memphis. You know what I'm saying? And this story right here is just highlighted in Memphis. But this is something that's going on a lot and nobody's really talking about it. It seems like for some reason, if you're black, you can't talk about certain situations that black folks do. Because ones that are not even involved in the stuff get butt tight. But when, when would a problem go away if we don't talk about this type of stuff? And it's getting crazy. And it's like, you know, every business has a right to refuse doing business with a certain entity. Whether it's black folk, green folk, white folk, uh, Hispanic folk, Asian folk, they have a right. But they don't want to have it to where it looks like somebody's getting targeted. Then again, they're always getting targeted. I'm going to talk to you about something today that's messed up. Now they're saying in Memphis, Tennessee, truck drivers are getting warnings from their companies not to stop in these certain type of cities. Not just Memphis, but other places. The, the computers on the trucks are doing alerts. When they pull up to certain places and telling them, hey, secure your load and your trucks. It's a high theft area. That's embarrassing for a city. It is, especially for those out there trying to make a difference to make the city right. I want to show you this story today about a gentleman that tells his story of being in an overnight truck stop out there in Memphis where thieves came in the middle of the night while this man was sleeping and robbed the back of his truck and other trucks that were there at this present time. It's a damn shame that you can't even do your job without it costing you money and you providing a service and understanding that your job is very important. And here come some knuckleheads that don't want to work and just want to come and take, take, take. And I understand the impact that it has on the economy, both in the United States and in your city. Check this out. A major retailer may be raising the alarm on the dangers of truck driving in this city. In fact, according to documents posted to social media, Bath & Body Works' parent company is telling its drivers to avoid some truck stops in Memphis. And it's not surprising. It's also pretty bad news for a city that prides itself as a transportation hub. Fox 13's Jack Billu shares how one company is warning drivers not to visit a rest stop in South Memphis. Normally, you know, Lowe's is known for, hey, friendly faces, green places. Um, you know, it, 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 it just, I don't know, man. It just, I can't believe it really happened to me. That's Ryan Yant, one of the countless truck drivers who make up the logistics industry that fuels the Mid-South's economy. But trucks like his keep getting broken into. He says he passes through Memphis every week, and on Sunday he made a stop at the Loves on 240 and Lamar to stay the night. Thieves broke the seal and got into his trailer as well as several others. I look on the ground and, and I notice my uh, my seal's on the ground. So I'm like, well, well, that's crazy. So I look at the door and uh, I notice my door is open. And so I look down the aisle, the whole back row, and there's like 10 trucks with their doors open. That case was one of four semi-trailer break-in reports MPD investigated at that rest stop just over the last week. The city's data hub says 137 reports were made over the last year there, dozens of which were trailer break-ins. Now, a document posted to social media claims Bath & Body Works' parent company is advising drivers to avoid that spot completely. 
then that falls back on me. I lose money. I lose time because I'm stuck there in Memphis having to deal with the police report. I mean, it, 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 it can impact you in several different ways. In a statement, Loves told Fox 13 it's committed to safety and that all locations are well lit and have security cameras. The company also says a security guard is at the business 24-7, but the sheer volume of police reports tell a different story. Semi-trailer thefts don't just happen at that Loves, though. Over the last year, Fox 13 has reported on countless incidents like what happened to Yant. In fact, some trucks onboard computers even warn drivers of the high risk of theft the moment they drive into Shelby County. It automatically starts flashing red. It says, secure your load. It's almost like they're, you know, they're biting the hand that feeds them. Uh, with it being a city that, that can completely relies on logistics and, and they're, they're stealing from the truck drivers, they're only hurting themselves. Now, Fox 13 reached out to Bath & Body Works' parent company, L Brands, to verify the warning about the rest stop. So far, we've not heard back. Hey guys, that's the news, and that's an embarrassment. It is. Now, some people might say, oh, you don't know if it was a black folks doing that, and this and that. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Let's stop it. These are not 10-year-old kids at that. These are grown folk doing this. Coordinated strikes, theft strikes, thievery rings, and all this other type of stuff that uh, is causing the economy big, mainly in those cities. And I'm sure cities have stores. And like the guy said, these cities rely on logistical transport to help them thrive. And there are people there that don't give a damn about nothing. The city, its people, even though they are residents themselves, they only care about causing destruction along the way in their own selfishness. I, did, I just looked up uh, the cities that had the biggest majority of black folk, right? Cleveland, Ohio, which I never knew. Shout out Cleveland. Miami Gardens, Florida. Detroit. Memphis, and I'm missing one. I'm missing one. Uh, a lot of people think it's Atlanta. It's not Atlanta. Uh, it's a small place, too. I can't remember. I apologize. I had them all in my head. But either way, man, these should be some of the best cities out. Because if everything is true of what we say, black folks being struggling and all of this stuff, you should understand the struggle. You should understand you should have a sense of pride in yourself and those around you to make a difference. That's a damn shame that a person can't bring a truck somewhere and have it to where they can deliver their product, get paid, take care of their families, so on and so forth, and had just everything run smoothly where as some people just like, hey, you know what, I'm gonna take the thing. And then the stuff they take and they usually don't keep, they go and sell it at a discounted price, way under wholesale of what it's really worth, just to make a quick buck. No sense of value. And when I say no sense of value, guys, I want you to hear me on this. A dollar, the, cent, the, the value of a dollar, most people don't understand the, the, the uh, value of a dollar. Especially black folk, we don't understand the value of a dollar. They'll get this money and put it right back out there into the, uh, into, back into the economy. But, you know, everybody want to talk about black dollars. I don't even know what the hell a black dollar is, but let, let's play that game. People say, oh, they don't take money and put it in the community. They don't do this. They don't do that. Nobody wants to. They don't care. These people that are stealing are, don't care. These are the same folks that go out here, do something, get in trouble. You'll see them on TV and people are march because they are looking as if they're innocent people. And this right here is a buildup of stuff. You know how much uh, balls it takes to go and run up on a stranger and just take something from them? Seriously, somebody you don't know, they could be armed just like you. And just do that. It's like nowadays, it's barbaric all over the place. We just going to steal and take what we want and ain't nobody going to do nothing about it. They don't even walk up on you and think that you can hurt them. When did, when did this become popular? Seriously, when did, how, did, how is this the new normal? Like I'm sitting in the car right now in a nice neighborhood, right? Somebody could run up to the car right now. Snatch me out the car, put a gun to my face, not knowing what type of person I am, what I'm capable of, who I represent. You know, they don't care with a mask. Most of the time, they're younger people doing this. You just seen in that video, the guy was driving down the street and they came out like pack rats and just 
while the truck was moving and started just grabbing whatever they wanted. Like I gave you an example with riding. Why when we ride, we tear up our own stuff and that ain't got nothing to do with the problem at hand. I never forget, I, I never uh, thought about that. I mean, I mean, I never, I never could understand that. Who robs a dollar store in a, in a riot? What does a dollar store have that's worth going to jail? They're opening up trucks and don't even know what's in them. It's like the compulsiveness to steal something or say you did something or to do something slick far overrides the reality of what can happen if you get caught. Seriously. I talk about this type of stuff because this is something like in my in my mentality back then when I was younger and now when I seen people that was on this type of stuff, I got away from them. It's like people gravitate to this stuff now. What if they make a new law that says, you know what? Due to uh, the economic restraints that we're going through and uh, this rise in crime and this snatch and grab, anybody we catch, we're going to take and blast them right on the spot. They get the okay for police. Don't chase them, just shoot them down. There would be a whole bunch of people upset, angry, and this and that. You know why? Because you don't see the direct impact that it has on you as a consumer, because your package just arrived on time. What about the people's packages that won't arrive on time, guys? Think about that. Some of these people are ordering things and having things sent in a logistical uh, manner over the road, through rail, then transported by trucks to get to these places. And that's the only way they can do it to make it financially, economically efficient. And here you got these people coming and just tearing this stuff up. And that, that's that's real. Like, I mean, I, I've been to Memphis. You know what I'm saying? I've been to uh, almost every state in, besides Wyoming and Montana, I've been to every state in America multiple times. And it's good people everywhere. But it's always overshadowed by the crimes that ensue there. And it puts a stain on that city. Listen, I live in Houston. Houston is a beautiful place. Yeah, it has crime like everybody else, but the crime is all over, just like everybody else. But think about it. Just us watching TV, hell, the stories I do, people could get the idea that that's a dangerous place. And you could just go there like something that happened to you for no reason. Is it always like that? No. But it's a higher probability than other places. And it shouldn't be like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't really get caught up in black and white, but I mean, cities that have majority, you know, black population, right? Wouldn't you think they would want to do better because the struggle is real? Wouldn't you want your city to be somewhere where you want people to come there and enjoy themselves and say, you know what? This is what th th these, these black folk out here are really doing something good. They know how to act. But no, a bunch of silliness. And it's like a lot of them are worse than other cities that, that are out here. And they shouldn't. A lot of these cities are not even big, big like that. But it seems like nobody cares. Are there problems in every city? Yes. But fixing them starts with each one. And then another thing is, you know, I say, hey, listen, we need more black cops. We need more black people to be in uh, city council. We need more black people to be pol politicians that really want to make a difference in the city. When you become, when you get into politics, you start small. City council, Congress, uh, 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 you know, not Congress, but, you know, a city council member. You get on these boards. You do this, you do that. You want to make things right. And it seems like, man, out here right now, man, I'm getting, t I mean, I'm, it's just me. I'm getting tired of hearing when somebody says Memphis, like when I was going to Memphis before, a lot of people are like, Steve, don't go down there. Oh, my God. Oh, it's dangerous. You can't be scared of your own people. You can't. You shouldn't be scared of anybody in America. You shouldn't. Your life should not be threatened because you go somewhere to try to make a difference or deliver a message or just meet the people that are there and get an understanding of what they go through. Some of this stuff is crazy. Who was that? She just made a cameo on my video. But, um, man, I, 
seeing this type of stuff angers me. I mean, if I owned a business, I would be like, nah, we don't service Memphis. Sorry. Then all of a sudden, what? Bad uh, rep on the, uh, on the company. Oh, the company's racist because they don't want to come there. Memphis. It's like nobody wants to talk about the elephant in the room. We have problems out here and we need to start addressing them. But nobody is saying nothing because a lot of times, unless it directly affects you, it don't affect you. It's a damn shame that guy lost money. You heard him? He said, I lost money. And it's not even his fault. His truck got broken into. What the other trucks that was there? And they said, the police report, this is an ongoing thing. This is something that's just going to get worse and worse and worse until they just start putting their foot down and really stepping on the problem, grinding on it. Because I'm going to tell you something. This is a new type of person out here, a new type of criminal. How come the laws are still old? People are not scared to go to jail no more. We have to have more alternative means of punishment to make people think twice about doing crime. Think about it. Only way, reason, only way jail affects people now is if they have some type of common sense to where, hey, I got a lot to lose. If I go to jail, I can't go to work. If I go to jail, I lose my family. If I go to jail, you know, how am I going to support my kids? These people out here doing these crimes right now don't think about none of that because they don't deal with none of that. That's just something to think about. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Shout out to the cities I just named. I had to drop a video today. I seen that. I figured I'd make a, a point me to that. And it's just BS if you ask me. See you in the next video. Take care. Yeah. And another thing. People run around here and say, oh, Black Lives Matter. We'll throw the flag up and all this other stuff. What black cities don't? Prove it. Start showing that you have pride in yourself and your people like you say you do and start getting in the position to where we're saying, OK, we want to make a change. We want to fix this right now. No more do we want a negative uh, moniker to the name of our city. So we're going to just start calling this out. And the people that are doing this stuff, people are benefiting from it and knowing who they are. It shouldn't take a catastrophic crime like an innocent child getting upset or something for the community to get upset or enough people to get upset and say, you know what? Now I'm going to say something. People, the more emboldened a person is, the more likely this type of stuff happens. Criminals look like they're smart when they're doing slick stuff, but when you do an investigation and the way they get caught, it's in the dumbest ways they usually tell on themselves. Just something to think about. I'm out.